Hello, I'm Jeff Barnes, the director of the Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency. This video is a guide for how you can have a positive impact on the veterans in your community who may be struggling with post-traumatic stress. It was jungle, I w it colors, the muzzle flashes, everything was going all at one time and I was right in the middle of it. And uh, the people tried to, you know, help me. But the hands that were on me trying to help me were the ones in my dream that were uh, attacking me and, and it was just, it's scary. When you find your buddies physically mutilated and stacked in a pile in the middle of a path, that's pretty hard to take. And it builds a crust around you of hate. And when you get home, you're still carrying that crust of hate. You're, you're ready to tear into anybody that steps on your feet. And you have to learn to live with that and control it. You go through some very scary times and you have to learn to live with it, understand it, what it is. A post-traumatic stress disorder uh, is a uh, chronic psychiatric condition comprised of symptoms of anxiety, oftentimes having to do with intrusive traumatic thoughts, negative and adverse emotions, which can affect a person's actions and behavior. There's a couple things that are critical to the development of PTSD. The incident that the person experiences or witnesses has to be outside the normal continuum of most individuals. Most people have a continuum that goes from here to here. PTSD, the seed gets planted when something happens to them out here or out here. The interesting thing with post-traumatic stress, as is the case with most disorders, is that they are, while there are a set of symptoms which tend to be somewhat universal, that is commonly shared, they're highly individualized. So two individuals who experience similar events may have entirely different reactions. There are a variety of definitions that have been used to describe the same injury, including shell shock, battle fatigue, post-traumatic stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, post-traumatic stress injury. With veterans, post-traumatic stress is commonly associated with service in a combat setting. I lost two marriages. I dealt with isolation. I dealt with drinking. Alcoholism, uh, bad, bad drinking. Drugs, uh, anger was out of control. I didn't care who I was lashing out at. Uh, I didn't drink to enjoy it. I drank to drink. It went from wanting to be around everyone to hiding behind the, fo the, the walls, just wanted away from everyone. I was at the point where I didn't feel compassion, I didn't feel love, you know. The only thing I, I ever felt was tired, rage, and wanting to be somewhere else. I deal with a lot of flashbacks, so um, sometimes while I'm driving or like in a grocery store, something could be dropped and it, literally my heart will stop. You're driving down a road, see a package on the side of the road, and before they know it, they've taken evasive action, they've slammed on their brakes, they've done what they've trained to. Triggers that can initiate post-traumatic stress may include loud or unexpected noise, unexpected bright or flashing lights, overreaction to minor issues, specific smells, unexpected bump from another person, flashbacks. Seeking, um dangerous activities uh, or risky behavior. Those are definitely coping mechanisms I've seen personally, not only with members that I've deployed with, uh, some of those also myself. Suicide, road rage, committing crimes. It's very important that, you know, with a veteran that tells you they're gonna commit suicide, 99% of the time when it comes to a vet, you can count on their word. So if they tell you they're gonna shoot themselves, you might wanna check that they see if they have a gun on them. Anxiety, uh, uncharacteristic behavior that we learn from family and friends, uh, 
of uh, sensations of, of feeling closed in, a need to act in whatever way they're feeling at the time with urgency and conviction. As the symptoms either increase or become more intense that the individual withdraws, both from family members, from friends, um, they have difficulty holding jobs. One of the, uh, the biggest aspects of post-traumatic stress, especially in families, is not just necessarily what the veteran's going through, but also what the family members are going through. Um, a lot of times what you have is the person that they married is not the person they got back from a war. People, when they come back, they think everything's going to go back the way it was before. And it's not ever going to be the same because people that are, haven't been there, they don't understand it. A veteran has changed. Uh, he's never, ever going to be the same. If he has seen combat, he's changed for life. So that, that puts a huge stressor on, on families in terms of the person that you love, the person that you know is no longer the person that's there. It causes fights. And again, just like a vet veteran would eliminate a threat if they get in a, a verbal confrontation with their spouse or another family member, they're not going to be able to just calmly talk it out. They're going to want to not necessarily hurt them, but explode on them verbally yell and scream and they either leave the situation or hurt themselves. Only a qualified medical evaluation can diagnose an individual with post-traumatic stress. Symptoms can vary widely and they can emerge immediately or after months or years have elapsed. During an initial engagement with a veteran with post-traumatic stress, a police officer might notice some of these common symptoms. Being hyper aroused, distant stare or darting eyes, being irritated, angry or upset, self-medicated with alcohol or drugs, being emotionally cut off from others, conveyance of guilt or shame, intent to harm self or others.